The main takeaway from the trip is I am definitely better in Europe. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boy. So I've uh, been back home from Europe, uh, oh, exactly two weeks today. Take a deep breath and get in, we'll travel the world as we sing. The main takeaway from the trip is I am definitely better in Europe, but that didn't become clear to me until I returned here to LA and see the moment I stepped off the plane about 50 or 30 seconds later. I started sneezing and got a super, super runny nose that uh, you know I was basically stuck in the bathroom at customs because I just had to plug my nose with thick towel paper. I There was no way for me to stop it. I just kind of had to wait in there and I overloaded on my antihistamine meds, which usually doesn't do much at all anyway and I ended up having to take a tiny bit of prednisone uh, steroids which damages my skin but uh, I had to take it uh, so that my nose would stop running like a faucet and I can actually get my luggage and get out of there and even though I did take some meds my sinus and airways starting from that moment just restricted and breathing became more difficult um, and about 24 hours later, uh, my digestive problems started and that has been very draining ever since this whole two weeks. Uh, my gut just hasn't felt right. And I did notice how nice my gut and my stomach felt uh, the whole time I was in Europe until getting back and having this contrast of, uh, feeling so much worse here. Um, yeah, just didn't have any problems and I think that was why I had the energy to go out and do so much because I didn't have uh, as much breathing problem and I didn't have any gastrointestinal problems that were wearing me down. 48 hours after landing, started getting the queasiness and the vertigo and the nausea and hot sweat symptoms that... Uh, it got so bad that I couldn't even sit up. I couldn't even walk. I was just so dizzy and didn't have an appetite for anything. And that didn't happen in Europe. It only happened a little bit while I was on the train from Paris to Amsterdam. I'm about 40 minutes early. Uh, the taxi ride over here got me pretty nauseous. I guess that's how you know it's a good taxi driver, right? Uh, so it's good that I'm getting a couple minutes to cool down and get some air and walk around. Hopefully I'll feel better before getting on the train because I don't want to feel like this when I'm having to sit down for three hours. It's not going to be a good ride. Made it into Belgium. Um, still feeling uh, very nauseous. Being on a high speed train is not the best idea. Uh, just trying to hang on. Uh, should be another about uh, two hours before getting to Amsterdam. So uh, it's really hoping I don't puke before then. I'm sitting by myself here in the luggage hold. It's just better because instead of sitting in there with all the other passengers, um, there are like food smells and perfume and things like that. So um, I kind of get my own little space back here. The queasiness of the vertigo was a big problem for me this summer and that was part of the reason why I stopped giving myself Dupilmab injections because I didn't know if Dupilmab was causing the vertigo and the dizziness or if it was something in the environment. I mean, there were a lot of wildfires uh, throughout the West Coast from Canada all the way down to San Diego. So that might have been a trigger. After having two weeks in Europe of not being dizzy at all, it was such a big contrast of coming back and feeling that. And it also made it obvious that it probably wasn't a Dupil map because 
<clears throat> dupilumab wouldn't have been in my body while I was in Europe and since I've been back. So any of these symptoms should just be my body reacting to the environment or the food. But the bottom line is that all these symptoms compounded and make me weaker and weaker and it just kept accelerating. I mean, right now I have my sinus is completely clogged. You kind of hear that and I just haven't been able to sleep because I just can't really breathe correctly. And I've been getting these hives um, as well. And these hives are just about the size of the tip of a pen cap. Um, but it, they're spread here and there on my legs and even on my scalp and on my back. and there's a little on my forehead um just really itchy so since the moment i got back my body has been having an immune reaction um, that's getting worse and worse and i guess my immune system is trying to deal with more and more problems and it's getting harder and harder for it to handle all these problems so i mean i cannot heal if these symptoms cut me down faster than i can recover that's basically it I mean, one thing that people have suggested was maybe I'm better in Europe because just a positive moves of traveling. I mean, basically psychological influences or you know, just kind of tricking my mind. Uh, but those people don't understand how hard it is actually for people like me with chronic illnesses to travel, uh, especially when traveling alone. I mean, not to mention like the countless unknown threats of traveling. All right, so I don't know what's going on, but it's uh, about midnight, uh, about 3 a.m. in the morning, and my right eye, uh, the eyeball is just swelling up. Um, the lens is okay, but everything around it is uh, getting really puffy and swollen, and it just seems like my eyeball is going to pop. All right, uh, it's Tuesday, October 2nd, about 10.30. Um, Basically, I slept all day and uh, my eyes are quite a bit better, actually both eyes and even the language barriers that people usually deal with. But uh, if I had uh, problems, I need to be able to communicate and sometimes that would be a little bit harder. And uh, I did miss my home. Living out of a suitcase in a hotel isn't easy for anyone and uh, I kind of miss my bed. and. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I was really looking forward to coming home, even just being in Europe for two weeks. So I should have gotten boosts of positive emotions and energy getting back. Um, but I do not miss this feeling of being incapacitated and using every ounce of my energy to withstand these symptoms, these suffering, uh, these problems. <laughs> So that's basically what I got out of this Europe trip was while I was there, I was wondering if it's because, you know, because I was more active there, because uh, maybe I had you know better mood. Uh, I was walking more, my lifestyle was different. So maybe that got my blood pumping more. I only checked into my hotel here in Brussels. But if I'm dizzy all the time, if I, if my gut uh, just feels horrible and I'm so drained of energy, I wouldn't have been able to go out and exercise more and uh, do more things that would be like a positive mood boost. So coming back, it was just clear that it was because I'm constantly suffering here that I can't do all these things that would be able to help my body and help my health get to a better level. <laughs> it's not that I could just exercise more and jumpstart everything. I need to be not reacting to so many things to be able to then exercise more and accelerate my healing. And so I just don't think I can do that here in LA. It was just so obvious that so many things were better while I was in Europe. My asthma did get better, but to a lesser extent. But like I said, everything else with uh, my digestion, um, my nausea, uh, my energy level, my uh, sinuses, all that was so much better that it gave my body the oxygen and the nutrition uh, that my body needed to have the energy 
to go out and exercise and do more. <laughs> <laughs>